Hello, everyone, and welcome to another massive edition of AEW Dark Hive Excalibur. Joined, as always, by the human smiling machine, Tez. And Tez, we've got a great night of action. Powerhouse Hobbs will be going one-on-one -on -one tonight. The powerhouse of Team Taz will be dominant again. I guarantee that. Not only that, a grudge match in the women's division. Chris Statlander and Diamante going head to head. But let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. is about a set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Hook from East Palo Alto, California. Weighing 270 pounds, Power House Huh? Well, 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 it's none other than me, Absolute Ricky Starks, here supporting my main man, Powerhouse Hobbs and Hood. I'm loving it, Taz. Well, I'm so happy you're here. I know Excalibur's happy you're here. How are you feeling, my friend? Uh, well, I'm feeling great because I'm built different. Yeah, there's some issues going on, but guess what? <laughs> Ain't keeping me down. No way. From Kansas City. Oh, Powerhouse Hobbs jumping Dean Alexander from behind. Never turn your back on a trained killer like Powerhouse Hobbs. You know what I'm saying, Stalks? That's what that, you know what? <laughs> Ricky, I like that. What do you call that collar on that shirt you're wearing right now? The, this is a deep V-neck. Okay. Doc says I'm supposed to wear a normal collar, but guess what? That's not fashionable that's for right. me. That's right, that's right. Your neck's too thick. Yeah. Talk so about thick right there. Look at Hobbs just running through Dean Alexander. Powerful. Dean ain't even get his jacket off. Powerful shoulder tackle there by Powerhouse Hobbs. This man's got a full length possum coat on, bro. A possum coat. That's a possum coat. <laughs> that's an imposter <laughs> possum coat. Look at it. No way that thing. Get that real. on Amazon Prime. That could be that could be real possum or raccoon. Don't matter. I think Dean Alexander's right for the pick. Oh, maybe not. Look at this. Hobbs. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Shoulder first into the corner. Now Dean Alexander throwing some right hands. Sure is. Get him off of that. Come on, Hobbs. Oh. 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 Now finally with the coat off. Dean Alexander looking to build some momentum here against Team Taz's powerhouse Hobbs. Well, see, that's the strength, the absolute power of the powerhouse. Nice counter, though, I have to say. Don't give him compliments. I know, but still. Oh! oh. The spine buster's in the house. Floats over. Two, three. <laughs> Dean Alexander should have kept the jacket on. Look at that. Oh, uh, winner of this match. What a slow Powerhouse. Huh. Don't matter if it's town business or if it's just a straight spine buster. Don't matter. Take a look at this. Dean Alexander charged in, and the spine was put firmly on the pine by Will Hobbs. Brick feet, brick hips. Power by the powerhouse. Big time statement victory for the hardest working man in show business, powerhouse Hobbs, who will be taking part in the casino battle royale coming up on Sunday, May 30th, live on pay per view at Double or Nothing. Well, buckle up, because look who's coming up right now. Dante Martin is next. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. As you saw on the bottom of the screen, Dante Martin six and a, sitting at six and one this year. He has been on an impressive roll since going solo. From Boyle Heights, California, weighing 201 pounds, Falco. Falco making his return here to AEW Dark, hoping to disrupt the momentum. Dante Martin, but he will have his work cut out for him. Yeah, absolutely tough. This young man you're looking at right there, Dante Martin, very. Very talented, no matter if he's tagging up with his brother who's out on injury right now or in singles competition. Super talented. Well, here we go. All right, this match getting underway. Dante Martin and Falco one on one here on AEW Dark. Listen, like I, like I said recently here on Dark, I, I got my eye, just keep my eye on Dante Martin. Ricky, you, you and I have talked about him. Yes, at uh, Blink. Yeah, you know, we've talked about him behind the scenes, uh, the rest of Team Taz. Wow. Look at the talent of this guy. I mean, what's not to like in Dante Martin? One for the Tijeras, and then Falco brings him over, spins him around, arm drag attempt. Blocked that arm drag, nicely done. Yeah, Dante put on the brakes, comes around the corner. 
Whoa, that time with the arm drag. Dante coming off the bottom rope, single foot drop kick, still enough to knock Falco back into the ropes and out of the ring. A lot of power on that single leg drop kick for sure, using the ropes as momentum. Uh oh. Watch out! Dante Ooh. elevating wow. up and over the top, just like Dark Elevation, available every Monday on YouTube, <laughs> 7, 6 Central. And that's why you're good. Let's take another look here. Speaking of good, let's take a look at Dante Martin. Oh, I thought look at the here. Replay my promo for elevation. No, 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 we're good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Boot to the side of the head by Falco, interrupting Dante, who's on his way back into the ring. Falco, yeah, wanting to slow down Dante Martin. That's the right way to do it. Double underhooks here. Nice suplex. And he hung on, floats over. Oh, just a one count though there from Dante. Use those hips to get out of that real quick. Dante that, did. I'll tell you what though, Falco seems like uh, even with a mask on, he seems a little pissed off right now. He knows you can't let this young man, Dante Martin, get more momentum because he'll eat you up in there. Yeah, it's it's been apparent that once Dante gets on a roll, he is one of the toughest to stop. Not a fan of that grip because there's no grip. But he's got a version of a top wrist lock there that's not a grip. You need an S grip, you need a gable lock, something. Yeah. The steward lock. No, Stewart. We don't have Stewart here. I made it up. <laughs> No Stewart. Kick to the chest <laughs> by Dante. Oh. Cabra Dora, the tilt world backbreaker. Falco right there. Good job again. But Stay not on him. not pushing the pace here, though. Exactly. Listen to Ricky Stocks. He's he's coaching him up right here. Stay on him. You heard Stocks. Stay on him. I know a little something. Something, something. These jabronis don't want to listen to me. That's yeah, what it jabronis. is. You know something about collars. Uh oh. Hey, <laughs> no, that's not even funny. Oh, no. wow. Big brain on Excalibur, huh? He's, you're wearing a deep V. Deep V neck because the real collar doesn't look good on me. So while I suffer in pain, I'm yeah. going to look good. You know what I'm saying? Well, the man's on an injury, and you're over here, Excalibur, you know, poking fun. That's not right. Hey. It's not nice. You know that. Knife club, Taz. I know Stay you're in the knife club. club. I know you're in the knife club. This is how we sharpen each other. <laughs> iron sharpens iron, Taz. Oh. You know what they say. All right. All right. Oh, look at Dante. He he's looks pretty sharp right here himself. Whoop. Swing and a miss there by Falco. Oh. Dante. Leaping Lariat. Oh. And the drop kick really kicking through. Dante. Some of his base pro wrestling stuff is tremendous, Dante. It really is. I'm ready. You think of him as this crazy high flyer, which he is, but oh. his base work is excellent. Gaman Geary from the apron to the inside knocks Falco back into the ring. Dante. Moonsault press hooks the near leg. Two. No. Falco, give him some credit for kicking out of that. That was well done, that moonsault by Dante Martin. And now Dante headed up to the top rope. We've seen him use that 450 splash as of late. I think that might have been what he had in mind, Excalibur, but Falco able to shut him down. Headbutt up at the top from Falco. Series of headbutts. The trifecta. Uh -oh. oh, Dante. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Let's now, go back to those double underhooks here. Yeah, Falco could be looking for the avalanche. Oh. Double underhook oh. suplex, butterfly suplex, but instead gets knocked back into the ring. Might be uh, 450 time, my friends. And look at that, no hands. Beautiful. Dante, 450 ah. splash, two, three. Yeah, I think he's going right in the face. Dante Martin. Dante Martin hits that 450 splash, and it was the end of the night for Falco. Yo, check this out, man. I think he. Oh, right oh. in the face. I knew I saw it on the live shot. Oh, God. Dang it. Wow. Oh, man. A crash landing, but a big victory oh. as Dante Martin keeps up the momentum. Today is a great day. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Every day is a great day when your name is Big Money Matt Hardy, the Kingmaker. But today is especially great because last night on Elevation, my boys, King Mark, King Isaiah, they beat the ass of the Dark Order, Alex Reynolds, and Five. That's right, yeah. And I even got to exact a little bit of revenge on that dastardly, terrible human being, Alex Reynolds. So that makes today even more special. And I heard from a little birdie that a double or nothing, three members of the Dark Order are going to be in the Casino Battle Royal. You know, typically they would have the numbers in a match like that, but not this time. 
Our goal has been to embarrass the Dark Order all the way out of AEW. And that's going to continue at Double or Nothing. Because three members of the Hardy Family Office are also going to be entering the Casino Battle Royal. That would be myself, Isaiah Cassidy, and Mark Quinn. And you know, the Dark Order, they, they're directionless. They're leaderless. They have no guidance. They have no true leader, no true boss in the HFO. There's no question about it. I am the man. I am the boss. And everyone takes a knee for Big Money Matt. So they are going to work extra hard to ensure that I am the winner of the Double or Nothing Casino Battle Royal. Not only are we going to get to embarrass the Dark Order once again, being you, Uno, being you, Tin, being you, Colt Cabana, but Matt Hardy is also going to win that very prestigious guaranteed title shot at the AEW World Championship. Oh, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day to be here on the Hardy Compound with my mansion in the background, the pool here to my left. It's a beautiful day. And at Double or Nothing, it's going to be a beautiful day when we embarrass the Dark Order and Matt Hardy wins the Casino Battle Royal and goes on to become the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. The truth is the truth. Number 10 with the Dark Order in his corner in action next here on AEW Dark. Join the Dark Order. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from the keep, weighing 240 pounds, Dark Order number I've had enough. Enough of this with Dark Order coming out all the time. 10, 15, 60 of them, 25 of them. Enough already. It's unfair. It's not fair. Whatever's grammatically correct. I mean, what's the... So when Team Taz comes out, it's okay. We don't do that. It's Ricky Starks, you're right. It's Hook. It's Hobbs. It's Brian Cage. It's that simple. His opponent from Hellgate, Florida, weighing 212 pounds. Ryzen. Ryzen better beware right now, dealing with 10 right there. One of the more bigger, one more powerful members of the Dark Order. 10's been on an incredible roll this year. Cracking the top five for the first time in his AEW career just a couple weeks ago. Of course, went on to challenge Darby Allen for the TNT Championship. But right now, goes one on one with Ryzen. See if Ten can exert his uh, his power advantage like he so often does. Yeah, and that's the that's the key right now. If you are in early going to this match, if you are Ten, use that 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 bit of that power advantage you have over someone like Ryzen right now. But you can see it in their physique. Ricky, you got a power advantage over most people from yeah. your powerful good looks. Oh, I, wow, yeah, look at fashion, that. Sense, everything's loaded with all that stuff. You guys, please. <laughs> you know, I was going to have a follow-up to it, but honestly, I can't top that because look at me. I'm absolute. That's the reason. I mean, really, that's it. Thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Check, please. Yeah. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> oh. Let's go behind there by Ryzen. And a shot to the side of the head takes the, the headlock. You see, he has the S grip locked in. Side headlock takeover. S grip uh, stands for Stuart grip for those at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new grip. The Stuart grip. I actually like it. No Stuart here. It's not because Whoa. your hands look like an S when they're clasped together. It's because it's named after Stu Stuart. Stu Stewart. Stuart the Shooter Stuart. Yeah. Uh, anyway. It's actually shaped like the uh, simoleon is the currency on the Sims. That's why. I didn't know you spoke Simlish, Ricky. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, you an opportunity to go Google it. Give it a while, make me. Sweet. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Watch out. Oh! Big <laughs> <laughs> right shoulder. Big pow. I love violence. Yeah. It's really. Yeah, I just love it. What are you, negative one all of a sudden? That's Don't my say homie. That name. Yeah, because he, he does not oh, like negative one. Dora Caught attempted. Him. Oh, he might go flying here. Oh! 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 Well, he didn't need his head. Don't worry about it. Call the practitioner because we got a morgue body on the loose. <laughs> hey, watch, watch. Man, you want to try that one more time? Let's take another look here. Watch this release German the suplex. Oh, jeez, right on the shoulder. A morgue body. <laughs> 
Ah, I don't know what that meant. It worked. It worked. It's, it's, Watch Ryzen this. sent hard into the corner. Ooh. Ten follows up. Big clothesline. Yeah, great camera shot. You see the power right there. And he's looking for that full Nelson. He had half of it. Smart. smart. And Ryzen, yeah, Ryzen felt the danger, the impending danger there. Able oh. to escape. Yeah, locker room knows that that ten will use that full Nelson when he locks it in. Man, good luck getting out of it. Yeah, you're out, out like a light. No doubt, it's powerful, man. Oh, Ryzen is pretty smart for somebody who wrestles with the cataract. Yes, he's got a cataract and he's got a crazy one half mohawk. Oh, oh, cover no. here, two. Wow, it is two. one half. I didn't even. It's like a red red mohawk hat. Oh, got those long legs like me. Leg lariat, <laughs> lateral press here. It's, it's actually a, 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 a double a mohawk. It's right. a double. I didn't see the the black side of the mohawk because it's black. <laughs> I just have to see it. Now I see it. He's got the cataract. Like Rick oh! said. He might need another cataract after that clothesline. Oh, big clotheslines there. Ten lighten up Ryzen sent into the corner, oh, and this could be the oh. big pump kick. On point right there goes ten. Definitely was the point of that boot connecting right in that other eye. Ryzen, I don't think he knows where the hell he is right now. Yeah, the end of the night could be rapidly approaching for Ryzen. As oh. 10 pops oh. him up. Let's go. Let's go. Full splash clip. I'd pass out. I love when he does that. Now, hold on. I don't really care for this group. I don't either, but I like yeah. the, the I like Come on, Taz. The I Let's have like a little internal either. consistency I don't like here. them either. I don't. But I do. Double I, boots I, I there like by them. Ryzen. Does that spine buster. Too it's good of a guy. Of... Give compliments. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm a impartial <laughs> commentator. This is my sure career. Does. I'm an announcer, sure Ricky. You know this. I understand. This. Yes, sir. Ryzen. Up to the top. Oh. Going for the Sunshine Atomico. Nobody home. Uh -oh. And uh oh. oh there yes. it is. And just getting ragdolled by number 10, Preston Vance, putting Ryzen to sleep. Full Nelson Jones. Waving goodbye. The yeah. uh, winner of this match. Dark Order number 10. Well, the impressive winning streak of 10 continues here on Dark, putting Ryzen to sleep. Yeah, you can see right here on this replay, watch once that full Nelson's locked in. Assuming there is an S grip in there. It's tough to do that with a gable grip or the steward grip, which is no such thing. Winner, Mr. Vance, 10, Preston. 10. Well, the Dark Horde. Preston, 10. Best friends will be here, but Chuck Taylor's in action with Trent, Orange Cassidy, and Chris Statlin. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. From Murray, Kentucky, weighing 217 pounds, he is the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor. Yeah, four more people I don't like. Yeah, everybody got a posse now, huh? Yeah, what's up with that, My posse's on Broadway. Guess what, we were the first. We were the first, kinda. And the only. His opponent from Long Island, New York, weighing 185 pounds, Aaron Rourke. I know Mr. Rourke a little bit here. I've seen him more than once. Looks like somebody Where? you would hang out no, no, with. No, 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 listen to me. All to the side. This Invite guy, him, him to the smoke shack? He's, in a, <laughs> he's an accomplished, accomplished in ring grab, like I promise you that. Okay. Very unorthodox, but he can go. He's had a creative pro system on Long Island. He's very unorthodox, but I promise you, he knows what he's doing. If he bust out a drop kick, now it's not a Ricky Starks Creative drop kick, pro. but it's a it's a badass drop kick he has. I promise Starks. you that. Are you Stop. telling me that there is a cap guy on AEW Dark? <laughs> I don't believe it. Get out of here! Color me shocked because wow, I would have never guessed, huh? Especially the way Taz was just reviewing about this no, guy. I'm yeah, just no. saying, Aaron's a, he's a, he's, he can go, man, he's, he, and he's got his hands full with Chuck Taylor. I'm a very impartial broadcaster. You are very impartial, and I, I'm so perplexed sometimes. Look at that. I don't want to give Chuck Taylor credit for that shoulder tackle. But it was nice. But I'm not going to say anything. All right. All right. That's the difference. I nice think. shoulder tackle there by Chuck Taylor. Got Aaron oh Rourke on his, a uh, little unsteady on his feet. All that talking ain't going to get you nowhere, pal. This is what they teach at Cap. Well, I mean, he's he's given up some experience, obviously, to Chuck Taylor. I think Chuck's wrestling about 30 to 40 years, maybe just, now. Yeah, just about, point, actually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty on brand. <laughs> Chuck Taylor, I believe, uh, 18 and a half years in the ring. Yeah, no, I ah. kid, but he, he can go. I mean, Chuck can go, and 
Oh, not a cap guy. Look at that. Oh, swing and a miss there by Chuck ah, Taylor. There's that drop kick. I told you. Oh, wait a minute. <sighs> he didn't get it. I don't know if he got all of it because Chuck didn't get Chuck mm, out of the ring on no. it. Mm. You know what? On the Stark scale, I give it a one out of ten. Oh, come on. Yeah, especially, especially because Taz really built it up. 1.5. Oh, you know what? Sorry. You know what? I'm going to take one point off. See, point I five. try to be a professional, <laughs> unbiased Jones. Ooh. Oh, Backdrop there by Chuck Taylor, Kentucky gentleman in the driver's seat after absorbing the contact from that drop kick. That was not very gentlemanly like, I will say. Yeah, what gives Chuck Taylor? Well, he's another guy. They're, they're, they're drinking orange Cassidy's orange juice. You know, Trent's another guy. I never liked Trent. And this Chris Statlander. Alien. If I was a woman, I'd fight him. <laughs> say that right now. If you were a woman, Taz. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, Let's not follow that line of thought. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I just, I'm just saying. I'd be friends I'm just, with this Trent. Well. Yeah, he's got the handsome look, thumbs up, always in a good mood. Orange Cassidy. I think he's drunk half the time. That's why he's always like. That's mellow. why he wears sunglasses. That's it. He wears yeah. sunglasses. He's mellow yellow. Mellow yellow. Mel, mellow right. yellow. Take, take four. Take three or four. Oh. Almost to the midsection there by Aaron Rourke. Stop on the foot. There. So you like Rourke because he's from Long Island? No, cool. it's that's the new Long Island Excalibur. Oh. If that is your real damn name, Soul Food. He's a talented guy. Point. Huh? Leaps up with the NZ Geary. Chuck Taylor just bailing out, trying to put some distance between himself and Aaron Rourke. Got all that damn glitter in the ring. I Got know. glitter all over. This is what they're showing up there on Long Island. <laughs> ring crew's uh, least favorite wrestler, Aaron Rourke. Well, I mean, he, he definitely loves glitter. Well, Ooh, he does. Is it on I or is glitter. it in Long Island? It's on Long Island. On it's an Island. island. Ah, see? Hey, you got to give the people what they want. I hate that. And of course, Excalibur's oh. got to get himself over. That never fails. No sell. You, you want to you you steal I, some hey, hats or something? I <laughs> Come on, bro. What are you talking about hats? Oh, sorry, they're on the boat from China, guys. What are you talking about? I got it coming Look, for you. Those are orphans in Indonesia yeah, can't yeah. knit fast enough. <laughs> He got a nice That's baby blue right one that I've never seen before. I'll hook you up. All right. Swing and a miss there by Chuck Ooh. Taylor. Rourke sends him face first into the top turnbuckle pad, then into the second turnbuckle pad. This Rourke kid is pretty smart, I'll give you that. He is. He can go. Oh, oh, oh what a you know what? landing. Wow. He give it and he take it away. I take back what I just but said he, about but Rourke. But Ricky, he went in full throttle. You got to give him credit on that. He, look, he, watch, watch look the this. replay. Oh. Watch the speed he built up. When he went into this, he went all for it. Watch, he just left it on the table. Didn't work, but he left it all out there. Rising Damn. knee strike, Rourke. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, he got stuck dead center of the ring. I, that was criminal. Here is your winner, the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor, you psychopath. Taz literally has his phone in his hand. He has dialed 9-1. And is about to call the cops on Chuck Taylor I for that I don't like when I see wrestlers throw all the wrestlers on the head. It's unprofessional. <laughs> call 911 <laughs> because, wow, look at it. 911. I would never drop anyone on their head when I was a wrestler. That's horrible. The awful waffle was the end of the night for Aaron Rourke. Oh, wait a minute. Chuck Taylor, Hold on. your winner here. Lay out for X AEW. You got to uh, give the people what they want, Dark. Just one day after going big game hunting, Big Bear Bronson went down to the Murder Hawk Monster, and I'm about to go some big game hunting again because Miro, you are the TNT champion, and I should be the TNT champion. It's kind of like coming full circle. It's kind of like deja vu, like I've experienced this somewhere before. Well, May 30th, it's going to happen. My destiny is going to be fulfilled. The Murder Hawk Monster will be the TNT champion. In AEW, Tony Khan, somebody's going to give me my TNT title shot on May 30th in front of a sold out crowd. This is gonna be so much fun. The blood, the pain, the torture that's going to happen because two big bad son of a bitches are going to throw down in a way that no one's ever seen before. Miro, last week you came across the man who's not afraid to die because you are the man who's not afraid to kill. But Miro, everybody dies. <laughs> and that includes you, Miro. Everybody dies. Everybody does. Everybody does. Should be a fast-paced matchup coming up. Fuego do Sol collides with Lee Johnson.
This next contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. From Mobile, Alabama, weighing 165 pounds, he is Frigo. I don't trust right here, buddy. I don't trust him. Anybody with a mask, you can't trust. Thanks, Taz. Actually, I had a very interesting conversation with Fuego Del Sol earlier today. I will talk about it in just a moment. I can't wait. His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Wow. Look who's with him, the American Nightmare himself. Hot shot Cody Rhodes. There he is, folks. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, who last week on Dynamite revealed that he will face Anthony Agogo of the factory at Double or Nothing on May 30th on pay-per-view. But right now, this man, Lee Shoddy, Lee, Big Shoddy Johnson, the crown jewel of the Nightmare family. The crown jewel, huh? The prize pupil. I know what it means. Wise guy. Well, along those lines, the conversation that I had with Fuego earlier today, he reminded me of how Lee Johnson first came into AEW. He was on a tremendous losing streak, much like Fuego. But once he got that first victory, that tipped over that the, the row of dominoes, and that allowed Lee Johnson to, to go on the roll and to really live up to his potential. And that Fuego essentially sees Lee Johnson in the spot that Fuego wants. Yeah, well, that's all nice and sounds great, like, like in like storytelling and stuff, like in uh, comic books, whatever. But the thing is, Fuego, in my opinion, is not beating Big Shot. I mean, I, I don't like Lee Johnson, but I just think I think Fuego's overmatched. But these guys are trading arm drags left and right. Fuego got the better of it there. He did. Lee Johnson, maybe feeling a little shown up here by Fuego del Sol. Well, that might be smart strategy by Fuego to get the uh, Big Shotty, you know. Get him a little pissed off. He's usually very calm, and, you know, kind of cool and chill in the ring. Yeah, and we've seen that when uh, when Lee Johnson is uh, gets a little hot-headed, he gets taken off his game. He's a little, little more error-prone than he normally is. Right, right. Good point. He tried uh, Fuego tried again for another head scissors. He tried again right there. You see Lee Johnson pushing it away. I like that. Cover here. Not even a cover, just uh, shoulders on the mat, and that allowed Fuego to get the head scissors. And lead you. Oh. Well, they, there was a little bit of a sign of respect before the match started with these two cats. But you, uh, I, I don't believe in that. I think you got your guy go for the kill when you can. And Fuego didn't uh, didn't like Lee Johnson pulling his shot there. Got up with some frustration on his face. Went for the trip there. Leapfrog goes up and over the top. Misdirect. Step up with the Hurricane Rana. And then comes Whoa. around the corner with the Tijeras. Lee well Johnson, a yep. little, little unsteady here. Leapfrog trip attempt there by Lee. And the drop kick right on the money. Big shot by Big Shotty. Beautifully done with that drop kick. Did the double buys. You can see he's from uh, the camp of Cody Rhodes. That's the, the ego that they all have. They love to flex their muscle. That's what they do. If you notice, all the members of Team Taz are ripped muscular vascular men. None of them flex. You ever notice that? Well, now you did. I just figured I'd share that with the group. There is the one guy that keeps shouting, who better? Well, he's the size of a small foreign car, <laughs> so he should. Hammer throw into the corner, oh. Lee Johnson. Ripping Fuego Del Sol uh -oh, uh -oh, with the uh -oh, uh -oh. shot. Suplex takes Fuego over the top. Big shotty, hook the far leg, just a two count, though. He's got good flow going right here, does Lee Johnson. I'd keep it going. See, he's got a little bit of a... Arrogance, you don't see that much out of Lee Johnson. Just my professional well, opinion. I don't know if that was arrogance or if that was just kind of uh, thinking about his next steps. Seems a little cocky, in my opinion, but hey, whatever. That's for Cody to deal with, not me. And Fuego coming through. Rolls up Lee Johnson very uh -oh. nearly. Single crab here. Pulled off an upset, now sits down. Single leg crab center of the ring. That was a nice transition by Fuego do Sul. A weird emphasis to put on that. Oh, that's my inflection. That's what I do. Lee Johnson, the up kicks there, breaks the grip of Fuego. Oh, Fuego wait, wait, rolling that. through both men, bridging up. Lee Johnson, backslide here, 
Up on his tippy toes, Fuego though rolled over. Knuckle lock here, Fuego hand fighting. That's not too smart in my opinion, if Fuego is giving up size right here. Oh! Oh, 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 man! And Lee Johnson standing, moots all press. Impressive combo, very nearly picked up the victory. Yeah, great job by Johnson right there. Not enough to get the win, but he definitely wore out Fuego Do Sol a lot with that, all, all those maneuvers, maneuvers he hit right there in that series that he did. Yeah, it looked like Fuego doing a little hand fighting on the mat, trying to use Lee Johnson's weight and momentum against him, but Lee Johnson just too powerful there. Fuego found out. Snapmare, Lee Johnson, the knee right between the shoulder blades. Wow, really bending those shoulders back. Oh, I'm just look at the joint manipulation right there, pulling those shoulders damn near out of the socket. Yeah, Way to tear an AC joint. Straining the joints, the tendons, the muscles, everything there. That upper body of Fuego del Sol. Fuego, though, ooh, point of the knee, right to the belly button, jawbreaker there. Fuego, ooh, back elbow. Caught Lee Johnson, trying to sneak in. Whoop. Fuego lands on his feet. Oh, wow, what a back elbow there. Ducked the first one, wasn't so lucky the second time around. Lee Johnson maybe thinking Blue Thunder Bomb. Fuego up on the shoulders, laying in some left hands to the head of Lee Johnson. Wow. Comes around into a stunner there. Yeah, he definitely rocked Lee Johnson, but unfortunately, Fuego cannot follow up. Might have been a huge upset right there. You're exactly right, Taz. It would be a huge upset. Could have been Fuego's best opportunity. We will see which man gets to their feet first. Paul Turner says five now. Lee Johnson using the, the ropes to pull himself up. This is Fuego. Fuego, though, firing in some uh, some forearm shots, Lee Johnson. Oh, the momentum. Yeah, oh. baited in, sent to the outside. Fuego, springing off the top rope. Yeah, I think he went off with one foot, Taz. Yeah, he was able to recover on that moonsault. Give him a lot of credit for keeping his balance. That is so damn hard to do what he just did. Watch Fuego. this, he lost yeah, that one foot. Yeah. A single foot off the top rope. That was impressive. Now Fuego headed up to the top. He's really trying to take that spot held by Lee Johnson here. Dive and cross body. Lee, though, uh -oh. rolls through. Uh -oh. hung, hung on. Lee hoists him up on the shoulders. Fuego, though, rolls through. Whoa, 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 He's got him stacked up high. No. Oh, man, that was close. Fuego. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Damn. Shots fired by Fuego. He's got him rocked. He's got him out. Hooks the far leg. Whoa, again, Lee Johnson kicking out. Wow. God, talk about upsets. That would have been massive. Fuego del Sol so close. He can't afford to get flustered, though. Yeah, he's got to stay focused to your point. He's just, I think he's a little, Fuego's a little shocked and shock and awe that he didn't get the win right there. But he's got to keep, just keep bringing offense right now. Fuego heads into the ropes. Lee Johnson hangs on. Cradle, blue thunder, bomb. Great counter there by Big Shotty. Three. The winner of this match, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Most quick transitions there, but I do think, correct me if I'm wrong, Fuego, thanks, Calvin, was trying to nail that tornado DDT. He certainly was. He was going right through. There. Yep, yep. And Fuego just caught him in midair. A great counter by Lee Johnson, that Blue Thunder bomb ending the night for Fuego Del Sol. Lee Johnson picking up yet another victory here in All Elite Wrestling. That's a wild thing. I heard you need an ice water with your mild wings. 
You a punk boy, sweating on the real. Beat your butt so bad, you be begging for a shield. Kingston, I'ma throw your ass in the garbage. Even worse, I'ma send you back to Chikara. Should've just retired, homie, when you had the chance. A plane make you disappear like you bagger bands. You trying to get a title shot? Are you joking? We'll blow you up. The acclaimed is explosive. The only shot that you get is in a shot glass. Both of you should have a podcast, cause you just talk, talk. Y'all are all talk. Moxley and Kingston getting hauled off. Take a walk, walk. Fake tough guys fooling everybody with your made up lies. Talk, talk. Y'all are all talk. Talk, talk. Y'all are all talk. Spoilers, Anthony and Max are winning. No escape now, like you going back to prison. Fake tough guys, really, you just lack attention. Probably think you're so hard because you had detention. Trying to skip over the line, that's a bad decision. Call up Tony Khan, isn't he the statistician? The acclaim, we've been running through the tag division. So your title hopes are gonna be an apparition. Loss, loss. You gon' take a loss, a claim, keep it 900 like we Tony Hawk. Saw your last promo, I was dozing off. Tegan and Sarah think that you should call it off, cause you talk, talk, y'all are all talk. Moxley and Kingston getting hauled off, take a walk, walk. Fake tough guys fooling everybody with your made up lies. Talk, talk, y'all are all talk. Talk, talk. Y'all are all talk. This guy's big, but a small talker. Lights you up like Lady Gaga's dog walker. Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, the Dark Order in action next here on AEW Dark. Join the Dark Order. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Evil Uno and Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Colt Cabana and Evil Uno in tag team competition tonight, but they are looking forward to double or nothing coming up live Sunday, May 30th on pay per view, where Uno and Cabana will take part in the Casino Battle Royale with the winner earning a shot at the AEW World Championship. Their opponents, the team of Tamillion Vanish and Duncan Mitchell. Both men making their AEW debuts here tonight. That was Vanish on the left. Duncan Dun Mitchell getting into the ring right here. Yeah, Duncan has the hood arm, rhinestone jacket. Or vest. Or half hood. Or vest with a jacket. Potato, potato, Taz. And there's Vanish. Big Dragon Jones. <laughs> oh, Uno and Cabana making a very hasty introduction there. Yeah. I believe this may be the first time we've seen the tag team of Uno and Cabana here in AEW, or perhaps anywhere. And Venetian Duncan. I don't know, maybe they tag all the time. I, I doubt it. But if, I, if I'm wrong, someone on Twitter will let me know. And I'm sure they will. And mute them. But I digress. A Hold Tamillion. on. Venetian. Venetian. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, 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 really testing Cabana's oh. balance. Oh, Cabana though, making Venice pay. Side headlock now goes around into the switch and the scoop and the slam by Cabana. Yeah, you don't want to play little haha -ha games with a guy like Cole Cabana. He knows every trick in the book. He probably wrote most of them, and he's going to exploit you. And that's what happened with Venice there. Yeah, Cabana looks may be deceiving. He did spend a lot of time on the British scene learning that catch and catch can style. He does it very well also. And, and it's a very unique style and it's worked for many years for a lot of athletes. And it's really something that uh, a lot of American pro wrestlers or in uh, Venetia's case, to million pro wrestlers, don't really uh, have an opportunity to prepare for. They don't have a lot of chances to compete right. against practitioners that, of that right. style. Right, sure, that catch style for sure. Oh, nice, good job right there by Uno. I don't like the dark order, but like I said earlier, every configuration they put together throws you off course, and it all works. So you got to tip your cap if you're wearing one, and I happen to be wearing one. There's a powder blue 
Well, it's actually black, but Ricky Starks really said it was powder blue. I don't I'm know trying, why, but uh, trying to keep keep the myth alive. Ted. It's just the neck injury affected his brain. I don't know. <laughs> and now, well, a little, little camera, bit of they're going to see his black on. Mr. Wreck. Oh, Manhattan oh. drop, drop kick there. Not to be confused with a Rye Manhattan. That's some sweet vermouth, my. Uh, the bar card at home. Luxano Jones cherries, but uh, enough of that. Yeah. Now getting control of the wrist. Making a thirsty tags. <laughs> Duncan Mitchell tags out to Venish. Oh, Cabana. Overhand chop. And Venish. Oh, good Russian leg sweep there by Venish. Cover here. Lateral press. Cabana. Not even a one count there. Tag out, Duncan Mitchell returns to the ring. Trapping those arms there. Took a oh! Little, ah, took a little wow. long. Wow, he clobbered Venish. Venish went flying, but yeah, definitely Duncan took a little too long. Duncan Mitchell builds up ahead of Steve Cabana, chops him down one swift shot. Hard chop, hard chop for sure. Oh, and Evil Uno. Line into Duncan Mitchell's DMs there with those back elbow strikes. Tell you what, old Duncan better pick up those trunks, those tights. It's starting to look like Axel Rolls in 89. <laughs> to shoot, you know. <laughs> oh, sweet child of mine, <laughs> I'm telling you. Duncan Mitchell on the verge of unleashing the Kraken here tonight. <laughs> pick those Neckbreaker oh. DDT combo. Evil Uno planting both Venish and Duncan Mitchell. Wait, wait what's Colt got in mind? Cabana. Oh. Rotten apple. Flying apple in the corner. Duncan Mitchell, big boot by Uno. And Evil Uno headed up to oh, the top. Oh, that's a lot of weight. Santana Tomico. And Cabana steps over. Oh my God, poor the Duncan. Billy Goat's curse. Duncan Mitchell taps out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was off. There are your winners. Dark Order. Oh, that was pretty rolled at the same club. I love it. <laughs> Two veterans, not on the same page. At well, the end of the match, the, uh, but the whole match yeah. they won. <laughs> for, oh, that was great. They were on the same page for 100% of the they way. They really won, then the match ended with <laughs> they won. As soon as, it, as soon as it didn't count. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Jushin Liger unretired to hit a combo oh, kick. Yeah, you're right. Oh, man. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Dark Order, victorious here tonight on AEW Dark Order. SVU. <laughs> looky here, looky here. A little bit of a size difference, folks. Cesar Bononi goes up against Marco Stunt. Yep, you heard me. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Sao Paulo, Brazil, weighing 200. Oh, wait, wait, what? Uh oh, this Sensual is sweat! Pounds. Why am I screaming? It's your favorite part of dark. Ah! And being accompanied by Pretty Peter Avalon, the Hollywood hunk, Brian Nemeth, and JD Drake. This is Cesar Bononi. And look at uh, Peter Avalon. He also could be a rocker. Look at him. He's like, he's like the drummer Metallica, but different. Look at him. He's got the whole summer wear. Very, on. very similar, but also very different. Yeah. Cesar Bononi with the pretty picture in his corner. His opponent from Olive Branch, Mississippi, weighing 120 pounds, Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt walking into the lion's den oh, here tonight. Oh, that's not right on a sensual sled. That's disrespectful. What the hell is that? Come on. And now. he flipped over the sensual sled. That's not right. There's nothing sensual about Marco Stunt. It turns out that the sensual sled is just a dolly nailed to a 
a heart-shaped piece of plywood. No, but it's the things that happen on the sled oh. in the evening that make it sensual. <laughs> that that carpet on there, that red heart, that thing is seasoned, bro. It's it, like has, a, it has seen some stuff. Oh, it's seen some stuff. I can <laughs> stop from there. I'll just move okay. on. I got a lot of things I could say, but I'm not. It's marinated. But look at the size difference here. Marco Stunt. If you couldn't tell, I had to tell you that. Look at this. Oh, my God. It's... Laying in some, uh, some strikes here to Cesar Bononi, but Bononi. For Bononi, Bononi, it's like he's a NAT. NAT, NAT. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Or a GNAT. Right, that too. Bononi. Uh-oh. He had... Oh! Oh, that, that thought, one might have caught him on the fork. I thought maybe it's... <laughs> yeah, the Yambag City almost there. Now Bononi's pissed. Cesar. Oh! Wolf. Just flinging Marco. We've seen Marco get bounced around the ring by a lot of bigger athletes for sure. He's tough though. Yeah, he is tough. Marco's and, tough. You know, I mean, what what he lacks in size, he makes up for in heart and toughness. Well, it sounds like a corny cliche, but that's the truth what you just said. Yeah, he's, he has yeah, a he lot of heart. Never man. backs down. No, no, he's tough as heck. And really, I mean, that's that's he uses that to his advantage. He. He gets his opponents kind of lulled into a false sense of security, and then they start making mistakes, and that's where Marco capitalizes, but uh, right now... Yeah, but not making many mistakes, but I No, he is not. Oh, my God. He just threw him like it was a tomato can. Look at that. Oh, not many people throw tomato cans. Three quarters away across the ring. Tens he used to throw some tomato cans back in oh, your day. Oh, my grandfather in Sicily used to do it all the time. They, they had no money. That was the, the game. They'd throw tomato cans. I was talking about Chris Chetty. <laughs> Knees to the crown of the head. I got it. That's funny. I didn't get it at first. That okay. was a good one. Thank you. Triple pop. Yeah. <laughs> and look at this. Marco Stunt making Cesar pay. Whoa. Oh. Didn't get it, though. Didn't get it. Yeah, you saw it. Cesar put on the brakes, but Marco following up with that drop kick there. Cesar avoids contact, drop kick to the top of the knee. That's just a do stick and move. Cesar Benoni going face first in that uh, that middle rope or middle turnbuckle pad, and Marco just walking up the back. Doesn't know, Benoni don't know where he is. And the diving elbow drop. Cesar in almost in harm's oh way, but God. now oh, oh, he break the face. Oh, oh, ho, ho. Cesar Benoni got to get no way, one. no way. Just a one count, though. It's like a damn Gulliver's travel movie show. Gulliver. <laughs> yes, it was Gulliver. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Cesar has got Marco stunt all oh. wrapped up and planted center of the ring. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Cesar Benuni. That's just obviously just. Oh, oh. look at this. The Nemeth. The Hollywood Hunt. Yeah. Ryan Nemeth, JD Drake, and Peter Avalon. Oh, 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 watch out. Here comes Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus coming to the aid of Marco Stunt. Oh, yeah. uh, Taz, it feels like there is something brewing here between Jurassic Express and the pretty picture. No doubt. You know, in my ideal scenario, I would have beat Darby Allen, and I'd be walking into the summer now as the TNT champion. Obviously, that's not really how that worked out, and that sucks. Um, you know, but the only thing I can do is keep moving forward and looking for the next opportunity. And the next opportunity is May 30th at Double or Nothing, where for the second time in my career, I'll be entering the Casino Battle Royal. And the first Casino Battle Royal was one of the happiest nights of my life. But realistically, there's probably no way that I was ready for a world championship match then. But a lot's, a lot's changed for me over the past two years. Uh, a lot's changed for all of us. And I think this time around might be a little different. So, May 30th, Double or Nothing Casino Battle Royal. Let's go. Representing the factory, Nick Camarado in singles action next here on AEW Dark.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 289 pounds, Nick Camarado. Mr. Freak Beast of the Factory, Nick Camarado. In singles action here on AEW Dark. You see QT Marshall in that beautiful black and blue shirt wearing rock the colors of the factory. Of course, Aaron Solo and Anthony Agogo. Hold on, look at this. I love this. Alongside QT and Nick Camarado. He grabs the steps, nobody helps him. The guy's gotta wrestle. And he puts those steps there for the leader of the factory. QT Marshall to sit down and watch. I am so damn jealous as I said last week with this. It will be Anthony Agogo going one on one with Cody Rhodes coming up on May 30th at Double or Nothing on Pay Per View. Can't wait, can't wait for that. And his opponent, Adrian Alanis. As you ought to know, Adrian Alanis, he's been a tag team competitor here on AEW Dark, now making his singles debut. Yeah. And there's QT Marshall. What's the matter? What? <laughs> QT Marshall looking handsome. I gotta tell you, I'm, I am really jealous. If I asked a member of Team Taz to put the steps there, they would tell me to go, you know what, off. They would not even do that for me. Tell you to go FTW yes, off? Yes, they would. <laughs> even my oh. own, yeah, even Quick hook, hook, I wouldn't even ask. <laughs> Didn't that yeah. kid to do anything? No, man. forget about it. Pulling teeth. I was just, yeah, exactly. Oh, that teeth's too strong, Camarado, to do a headlock takedown. Side headlock. Held in tight, but Ooh. Alanis thrown off Camarado. He's going for a single leg, and I don't know if that, well, I definitely know that's not a good idea. Nick he didn't even have to sprawl, so no. just yeah, he didn't he stood there. Just held his ground. Right now, Alanis drop kick. Ooh, knocked Camarado back a couple steps. Camarado charges in. Back elbow there from Adrian Alanis. Alanis is moving well. He's definitely stringing the right moves together here. Drop kick to the shoulder. Camarado a little unsteady here, Taz. Bringing the fire. This kid, this kid Alanis, is bringing the fight. Camarado creates some dis. Uh oh. Alanis just walked right into that one. Running power slam. Stampede style, more or less, without hitting the turnbuckles. Camarado planting Adrian Alanis, center of the ring. QT is. Probably so happy and proud of his old friend Nick Camarado and the opportunity that QT's given all three of these men with the factory. Ooh. It's just uh, it's impressive, and I can't wait to see a go go and Cody lock horns. I can't wait for that. That'll be coming up on May 30th, double or nothing on pay per view, BR Live or Fight TV. As Anthony Go Go, of course we know Go Go. The eyes of the UK will be watching as the bronze medalist goes uh, cover here. Shoot. Well, we've seen Anthony Gogo just recently on Dynamite, you know, more than once, just come out, ever the opportunist, and catch Cody Rhodes with body shot, just dropping the American Nightmare with body shots. That that man right there is lethal with his hands. Anthony Gogo, heavyweight power, but middleweight speed makes him so dangerous. Be a very, very tough test. Cody Rhodes' abilities coming up on May 30th. But right now, Camarado having his way with Adrian Alanis. Look at Camarado, man. That guy. Borderline Grizzly Bear City right there. Camarado keeping Alanis tight. Look at keeping QT, him close. QT don't even have to like motivate or yell at his guys or nothing. He just sits there stoically and watches. Oh, Camarado walked right into that big elbow strike, but able to absorb all the contact. Swing and a miss there. Uh oh. Discus clothesline absorbed once again by Camarado. That definitely didn't work. Oh boy. Alanis tried to build up some momentum. Hits the ropes, but walked right into a truck. Yeah, Camarado just damn near beheaded this young man. QT Marshall just nodding from his his seat, his throne on the steps. Oh no, his power bomb. Oh boy. Uh oh. Adrian Alanis was fighting. Camarado. Oh! Damn. <laughs> Holy smokes. 
Don't even worry about shooting a half to get him. Just get him on his back and end it already. Wow. No uh, winner of this match, Nick Camarado. I mean, he got power bombed, he got wedgie, he got driven damn near through the ring. Nick Camarado, I'm not even sure Camarado knows his own strength. He does. But the factory, all four men, so dangerous, especially Anthony Agogo. Well, check this out. We got Sonny Kiss with Joey Janela in his corner against Serpentigo with the crazy whacked out Luther in his corner. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Luther from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Weighing 175 pounds, Sir. Pentacle. Taz, yes, a couple weeks ago on Twitter, maybe a month ago, said something about your feelings about birds. Oh, God, I, I have, yeah, massive problems here with birds for years. Massive. I hate them. Why? The disgusting, germ-fested rats with wings. All birds? No, not parrots, not cockatiels, not hawks, not eagles. Not Falcons either, but most of them are. Okay. And his opponent being accompanied by Joey Janella from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 188 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss. Well, hey, I'm talking to Miley Cyrus on the phone right now. Isn't that ass great? Oh, wow, Joe Janela that was, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking to Miley Cyrus right now. Is she drunk? <laughs> Is he talking to her about birds? Because I'm talking to Taz about birds. Oh, Janela's probably a guy who plays with pitches in the street in Asbury Park. But I digress. There he is, that rancid Joe Janela. What about, like, an egret? Oh, they suck, too. So anything in like the Raptor family you're okay with? Yeah, mean big brothers. I don't mind those. Like Ghidra. Ghidra is actually a dragon, I believe. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically, well, I'm not technically, actually. Right, uh, untechnically, but right now, Sir Plentico. Sir Plentico. Sir Plentico and Sonny Kiss. Going one on one here on Dark Luther, grabbing at the boot of Sunny Kiss. That distraction was enough for Serpentico to capitalize. Look at that, the, the symmetrical face of an angel. Well, I mean, Luther screams innocence. <laughs> Actually, he screams a lot of a lot of things. It's not just innocence. Swing and a miss there by Serpentico. Sunny, coming in, and now the Cazadora. Sunny splits out into the arm drag. Serpentico. Put on the brakes, you saw how wide the base of Serpentico was there. Able to neutralize those legs of, uh, of Sonny for a moment. The Tierras applied. Wow. Sonny able to walk it through. Takes down Serpentico. Serpentico very unsteady here. Had Serpentico a little dizzy oh. before that Tierras. And now what's Sonny Kiss got in mind here? Hammer throw into the corner. Sonny goes up and over. Big roundhouse kick. Serpentico. Oh, oh, oh! Bad landing, wow. That was just a desperation move by Serpentico. Nothing fancy about it, Taz. Just, just fell into the ropes, and that disrupted the balance of Sonny and Kiss. As you know, Excalibur, sometimes the best moves that you can do to your opponent during the match is something simplistic and basic, and that's what happened. Oh! oh. Kick right between the kidneys there. Oof. My main thing is basic burns. Cover here. Two. I don't like the basic birds and the mallet head birds. I don't like them. The mallet? Mallet heads, yeah. I like cardinals and blue jays. But Serpentico's What about Orioles? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, funny. That's a good one. So you like pretty birds? I never said that. Well, I mean, it seems to be implied that you like pretty birds. I don't like basic birds. I like this stomp city right here. Sunny Kiss is getting stomped like crazy by Serpentico. What about a pelican? Nah. Nah. Flamingos neither. They're not even birds. They're like kind of like a dog. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. The spine 
of Sunny Kiss getting bent in oh, half here by Serpentico. Aubrey Evans, the referee, trying to get some control. Just having to bodily remove Serpentico. She did a good job. That she did a very good job there. Aubrey did. It was it was either that or disqualify Serpentico. But Sonny, you know what a competitor Sonny is. He doesn't want to win that way. Cover here. No, no, no. Sonny, to your point, is definitely a hot-filled, tough competitor. And Luther, of course, we will see here in our main event later on tonight when he goes one-on-one. -on -one. Brian Pillman Jr. of the Varsity Blondes. Looking forward to that matchup. That should be something. Clash of styles a little bit. You got Pillman Jr., as you said, against the uh, wackadoo himself, Luther. The original death dealer, Luther. But right now, Serpentico working over the spine of Sonny Kiss. Some misdirection oh here. Busy over here. Oh! Whoa. Rough landing on the outside for Sonny Kiss. And Joey, Joey Janella coming to the aid of Sonny Kiss. Just, uh, just putting his body in between Sonny and Luther's. The dynamics, the components in this match it just, it just makes me laugh. It's funny because Joey Janela and Luther just yelling at each other. It's just entertaining. Oh, roll up here. Two. Sunset flip nearly sealed the deal for Sun. Oh, 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 wow. Big time clothesline right there by Serpentico. Powerful clothesline. Lateral press here. Two. No. Sunny kicking out. It's like the back, the jock strap of Serpentico is hanging out. Strap itself of some, the some, waist. Hey, a wardrobe malfunction filled episode of AEW. Nobody wears jock straps anymore, but I think Serpentico does because Luther probably tells what's a good idea. Oh! Big boot up in the corner by Sunny Kiss. Luther, of course, <laughs> famously proponent of jock straps. First thing on his Wikipedia page. It is now. Sunny Kiss. <laughs> series of clotheslines. The back elbow steps through. A belly to belly suplex. Kind of had a high collar and pushed the quad up in the air as he bridged. It's an interesting suplex right there, but, but good job by Sonny Kiss. Oh, Sonny. A little bit of twerking, a little bit of moonsaulting, a little bit of covering. Oh! Very nearly picked up a victory. Sonny Kiss for sure almost captured the win there. Sonny keeping the pressure on or looking to keep the pressure on. Hand to the corner, the rapid kiss missile. No. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! The kick across the jaw, the low angle DDT. No! Wow. Nice series right there with that short DDT finishing it up. That was three! Shut up! See, he screams a lot of things. Serpentico has Sunny down, headed up to the top. Look for the foot stumps. Nobody home, Sunny. Shot to the midsection, kick. The oh. roundhouse, great combination there, Taz. Excellent done, excellently done, I should say, by Sonny Kiss. Serpentico's rocked here. Serpentico up on the shoulders, but look Luther, at this, Luther. Luther coming up the ring, and, and Joey Janela, he warned Ooh. Luther on the outside, but Luther with that massive pump kick. Referee never saw it. Janela doing his partner a disservice here, and Serpentico picks up the win. No winner of this match. Serpentico. I think you gotta look at that as an upset, man. I think so, Taz. Luther with the shot behind the referee's back. Well, that's what did it. Joey Janela just too fired up and inadvertently costing Sonny Kiss this match. Serpentico, Chaos Project! Oh, God, it's a full lens. Tag team action in the women's division as Vert Vixen and Jasmine Allure team up to take on Big Swole and Red Velvet with Kylan King in their corner. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Kylan King, the team of Big Swole and Red Velvet. Taz, we've seen a lot out of this tag team here as of late on Dark and on Elevation. But tomorrow night, Red Velvet has a huge opportunity 
when she will challenge Serena Deeb one on one for the eight, uh, excuse me, for the NWA Women's World Championship. And there we yes. see Serena yes. Deeb. So she has that championship with her, the NWA Championship, and uh, tremendous competitor is Serena, as is Red Velvet. And their opponents, the team of Burt Vixen and Jasmine Allure. Bert Vixen and Jasmine Allure, not their first time teaming, as you can see. They're going to have their work cut out for them. But, Kaz, just to take a, a step back and talk about that NWA Women's World Championship match coming up tomorrow night on Dynamite. This is uh, Serena Deep's first match back from injury. And it'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, if there's any, any ring rust, any cobwebs, if, uh, yeah. you know, because Velvet has stayed sharp. Oh, that, that's a great observation by you, and I agree with you. Uh, the thing is, though, as you know, Serena Deeb and most fans, I think, know that she is a pro's pro. I mean, she's a well-traveled pro, so I would assume she's ready to go physically, in shape, but sometimes ring rush, you can't stop. Yeah, I mean, ring rust is, is a very general phrase, but... It's a real thing, though. It, it is, and I think a lot of times, at, at least in, you know, in my experience, Ooh. it comes from, you know, second-guessing that injury and things like right. that, you know, like if... If you, if you step wrong on your knee, you're worried you might re-injure it or something like that, and you just gotta be fully confident. And Serena, she's brimming with confidence, but so is Velvet. So this is gonna be yeah. an incredible matchup tomorrow night as on Dynamite. You, no doubt, as you can see right there, Red Velvet was cooking on all cylinders, and she's showing Serena Deeb in the front row. This is what you gotta deal, deal with tomorrow night for that NWA Championship. Vert Vixen seeing her first action of the match, as is Big Swole. Side headlock there. Swole really stepping that left leg back to wrench in on that side headlock. Ooh. Knee across the midsection. Bert Vixen avoids the clothesline, but not the shoulder tackle. Yeah, good job by Swole right there. A lot of power in the shoulder block. Bert Vixen went for the trip, almost took down Ooh. Swole. Swole, snap, mare kick to the spine. And the uppercut. Along the shoulder blades. Big Swole covers here. Just a two count. Yeah, Bert Vixen's in trouble here, and you feel like Big Swole's trying to bring Vixen over to her corner where Red Velvet is, which was smart. That stop to the chest kept Bert Vixen in place, allowed Swole to make the tag. Uh oh. Double, double kicks to the tops of the knees. Double flatliner there. Velvet covers here. She had a good cover, but Vert she Vixen did. not out of this one yet. No, she's not. She's tough. We've seen Vert Vixen before. She's got a lot of heart. Big elbow strike, but Red Velvet not backing down. Vert Vixen blocks. A hair pull. Well, any little mistake that Red Velvet makes during this tag match, I promise you Serena sitting in the front row is making mental notes. I guarantee that. Oh, absolutely. Looking to exploit any potential mental lapses. All in defense of that NWA Women's World Championship. Coming up tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. Dynamite cover here for Vert Vixen. That would be an upset, Taz. Yeah, I think, I think so, for sure. But you made, you made a point earlier in this match here, and you're right about Red Velvet. She has stayed really sharp. No matter if it's here on Dark or Elevation or on Dynamite, she has. So, you know, Ooh. she's a confident competitor. Even though right now she's having a hard time, Red Velvet, during this particular tag match in this moment. But she can go. That, don't, don't, you know, she's she's a, a little stick of dynamite. She really is. No yeah. pun intended. <laughs> oh, double hip toss. But you know, to get Velvet in this pace, it, it took that illegal hair pull by Vert Vixen. But right now, cover. You know, that's there's not going to be an asterisk next to the the victory of Vert Vixen and Jasmine Allure are able to pull it off here tonight. Velvet, yeah, she's fighting. She's swinging fighting through. Yeah, uppercut. She dropped her knee. She rattled Vert Vixen. Vert Vixen makes the tag. As does Velvet. Big swole. Cross chops the pump kick. Takes Vert Vixen off the apron. Swinging a miss there by Jasmine Allure. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Blue Thunder bomb onto the knees from Swole. Jasmine Allure kicks out the driving knee strike. One. Two, no, Vert Vixen breaks it up. Well, good job right there, and Vixen's got to try and keep Swole in her corner, her, te her team's corner, I should say. And, yeah, great move there by Vert Vixen, pulling her partner into the corner. 
Get in position for the tag. But, oh, the spear! Wow. From Red Velvet. Neutralizes Jasmine Allure. Vert Vixen gets rolled in. The dirty Ooh. dancing from Swole. Cover. One, two, three. No winners on this match. The team of Red Velvet and Big Swole. You saw Serena Deeb nodding there, saying, OK. She, she knows what she's got lined up for her tomorrow night on Dynamite when Serena Deeb defends the NWA Women's World Championship against the challenger, Red Velvet. Yeah, she's very poised. Get Serena Deeb, you saw that Red Velvet gave her a look, and yeah, she's smiling, but trust me, she sees everything she needs to see in that match. Could we see a new NWA Women's World Champion tomorrow night on Dynamite? To me, my fighting spirit is, there's no quit. The only time I'm gonna quit is either if I'm dead or if you knock me completely out. Serena is somebody I respect, somebody I look up to, somebody I've watched for a long, long time. It's gonna be an honor to step up against her. I'm the underdog. No one thinks that I can beat the amazing veteran. But I've been backed up against the wall time and time again. So this will completely change the game for me to hold the NWA Women's Championship. It holds a lot of honor, respect, integrity. Every woman that's held that title has held it at such a high caliber. It's time to put everybody on notice of who Red Velvet really is. Uh, here I go again. I was born ready, time to show the win. I guess I'm on a roll again. Yeah, I'm coming through. AEW Dynamite. I have experience, I have grit, I have passion, I have heart, and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna give it everything that I've got. Red Velvet has the blood of a fighter. Bring me everything that you got. But does she have what it takes to call herself a champion? We strong, asking for more, uh. The world will be watching when the NWA Women's World Champion returns. Stay ready, don't get ready. Serena Deeb is back and ready to take on all comers. Oh my God, Red Velvet! Oh the sky in Red Velvet! One half of the Varsity Blondes is in action right now. Griff Garrison. Contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Winston, Salem, North Carolina, weighing 230 pounds, Griff Garrison. Griff Garrison, a singles encounter ahead of the biggest match of his life tomorrow night on Dynamite, 8 7 Central on TNT, where the Varsity Blondes will challenge the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Me being a fellow football player, and uh, I was over like Rover with the cheerleaders, but enough of that. This is back in the high school days. Deion Roosman making his AEW debut here tonight from Wasilla, Alaska, Taz. You know, you can see Russia from there. Sure, sure you can if you look close enough, but uh, let's and, see right here. And if you have a telescope. Big one. Collar elbow tie-up center of the ring, Garrison. Steps into the side headlock, drops down to a single knee. Garrison's a long, tall, rangy athlete. Tough competitor. Good headlock get on. Now into the well, into the waist lock, steps through side headlock, takeover. Bruceman down on the mat, center of the ring. 
Griff Garrison doing a good job of dictating the pace thus far. Good job by Roosman right there to get kind of got a semi waist lock. That's what you want to do. Oh, he's grabbing some hair now. From the hair, Mike Posey immediately spotted it. And, oh, elbow strike there by Roosman. Irish whip into the ropes, swinging a miss there by Roosman. He was swinging for the fences. Good thing Garrison avoided it. Came back with that shoulder tackle. Hard tackle, too. Whoa. Garrison put on the brakes, came back. The shot of his own. Small by Griff right there. He, like you said, put on the brakes. Roosman went for a uh, leapfrog, but nobody was there. And he got lit up with that line, that clothesline. Oh, Roosman gouging at the eyes and then just an uppercut when Garrison couldn't see it coming. Roosman. Oh, abdominal stretch. I know he was trying to get on there, but got a pretty good abdominal stretch going right here. He's driving his palm into the rib cage of Garrison. Look at those intercostals, those little muscles over, over under the rib cage. Oh, nice hip lock to get out of it. That's the right way to get out of it. Good counter there by Garrison, using his range, using that big boot, send Roosman into the corner. Griff, though, diving splash, nobody home. Roosman, oh. Right to the second rope. Great improvisation there by Roosman. Steps over, power slam here. Good job by this young man. Impressive display. Whoa! Roosman flips out, or not quite flips out, but went out into the splash. Just a two count, though, says Mike Posey. Yeah, I don't think he was trying to make it look pretty, nothing like that. He just wanted to land on Griff, and it worked. And body to body contact, and then a left hand. Brian Pillman Jr. trying to fire up. Crowd here at Daly's place. Roosman rolls Griff through. Oh, just a knee drop. And then comes over the top with an elbow drop. Roosman used his momentum to good advantage. Didn't have a tight cover there, though, Taz. No, he didn't. But you know what? He's shown a lot of fire, a lot of energy, a good motor by Roosman right here. Can he keep it up? That's the key on a guy like Griff. Yeah, just like Griff was dictating the pace earlier on earlier in this match, Roosman doing a good job of forcing Griff Garrison to wrestle his type of match until realize, too, just then. As you know, Griff has been involved as, as a tag team wrestler for quite some time now. So he's maybe a little off as a singles, but he's picking it up right now. He certainly is. And now it's the big splash in the corner. Garrison brings Roosman towards center. Falcon Arrow, he's done the deal. No, nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. Uh, that was a nice kick out right there. Definitely a nice kick out. And just a reminder, tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, it's AEW Dynamite. The Varsity Blondes, Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr., the biggest match of their careers. They will take on the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. That is coming up tomorrow, 8, 7 Central TNT, AEW Dynamite. Explosive rolling elbow there from Garrison. He covers and gets the win. No winner of this match, Brent Garrison. Well, Taz, I think you hit the nail on the head. Garrison, so used to competing as a tag team competitor, he was a little unsteady at first. But once he got rolling, man, was he hard to stop. Yeah, and I think that's something to keep an eye on in our main event with Pillman Jr. against Luther. You know, working as a, a, a tag team wrestler, but same thing goes for Luther. So we'll see what happens. His name was Brian Pillman Jr. Big victory here tonight for Griff Garrison. Can he and Brian Pillman Jr. keep the momentum going into tomorrow night AEW Dynamite Championship match against the Young Bucks? Big time singles contest here on AEW Dark. Matt Seidel goes one on one with Marty Casaus. Set for one fall over the 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Clearwater, Florida, weighing 166 pounds, Matt Seidel. Taz, what is it with the Seidel brothers and Team Taz? They just don't, I mean, they, they, they don't stay in their lane. His opponent from Salt Lake City, Utah, weighing 230 pounds, Martin Kissaus. Too much orange and black for my liking, but I digress. Um, it's iridescent. Right. So here's the thing. Uh, Matt Seidel right there, great competitor, there's no doubt about it. As his brother Mike, same thing. You saw Mike 
buzz right through. There's Mike right there. We saw Powerhouse Hobbs, I should say, a couple weeks ago, buzz right through Mike. And then Matt had to come out and get in his business. Matt's lucky Hook and Hobbs didn't kick the hell out of him there. And now, you know, then we see Brian Cage does away with side down. I mean, so it's like stay in your lane, side down. Stay in your lane, both but, side downs. But team, team Taz gets involved in other Team Taz members' matches, and they're not even related by blood. So it's okay for Team Taz to do that, but not the Seidel brothers? So we do what we want to do. We and they did it after the fact, too. It wasn't even during the bell. You know what I'm doing tomorrow night on Dynamite, right? I know what you're doing. Do you know what I'm doing? Yeah. I'll be guest commentator on a match between Christian Cage and Matt Seidel. Okay, Christian Cage apparently doesn't like my expert's commentary. Oh, he, I, he made that very clear. Oh, roll up here by Seidel. Looking to make a quick end of it. Yeah, I, I've been busy as a commentator getting his ass over for years. Okay? So, and that's a shoot. So here's the thing, ain't no one gonna talk about me analyzing any wrestling. No one could doubt my credibility and my legacy. So frig him. Okay, so I'm looking forward to calling the match tomorrow night on Dynamite with Seidel and Christian. Tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT. It'll be Christian Cage one-on-one -on -one with Matt Seidel. Very intriguing matchup, and of course, as mentioned, Taz will be joining us on commentary. But right now, Marty Casaus Having his way with Seidel, but Seidel, fleet-footed, oh, putting those kicks to good use. Seidel is is a tremendous, tremendous wrestler. There's no doubt. As I said, so is his brother Mike. There's no doubt about it. But you know, when you mess around with guys like Brian Cage, the Machine, the FTW World Champ, or Powerhouse Hobbs, or Ricky Starks, or Hook, you know, we we don't play game. We're not nice people. Look at this, Casaus just bludgeoning Matt Seidel in the corner. Casaus. Paul Turner telling him to keep those shots clean. Back off when referee calls for a break. Hammer throw in the corner, reverse, drop toe hold. That was, that was very crafty by Matt Seidel right there. Matt Seidel using his opponent's size Ooh. against him. How about, how about Christian Cage? He's a little hot. He's a little sensitive because of my technique by Taz. Because I, I guess I outed him on some of his shortcomings in his match against Kazarian or Hobbs. Too bad, Christian Cage. Grow up and stop bitching. Big pump kick there by Marty Casaus. Usually the uh, technique by Taz is a little more complimentary to the subject, though. Yeah. Come over here. Well, the subject should be doing things right in the ring. I was trying to help him. I, I didn't even charge him for the advice I gave him. Well, I mean, after seven years outside of the ring. Well, then he should have stayed home. Enough of the seven years with him talking to Christian Cage. Stay home. Count your money. Shot across the spine by Marty Casaus. Seidel's in trouble right here. Sorry to, lose oh. my cool. Sorry to lose my cool by Christian Cage. Like I said, he will be wrestling Seidel tomorrow night on Dynamite. Kick to the outside of the thigh, the chest kick. And Matt Seidel. The rolling soul, but proving problematic for Marty Casaus. Very explosive, there's no doubt. Very explosive is Matt, Matt Seidel. Could be equally as problematic tomorrow night on Dynamite. Great ankle pick there. Goes over into the Mariposa. Matt Seidel looking very impressive. Christian Cage definitely gonna have his hands full. Oh yeah, he definitely will. Oh, but Casaus. Hope he loses. And I don't like oh. Seidel either. Oh, and the stomp. Driving Seidel face first. So you're saying the best possible outcome tomorrow night is if uh, the ring just falls into the ocean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just go fall in the ocean with the ring. What about Bray? What about Paul Turner? Him too. I don't like him either, the ref. He's sketchy. Swing and a miss there by Casau. Seidel goes around the corner, gets whoa, the whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, They were fighting for it by Seidel. Had that little little dip of the shoulder. Oh! oh right against the head ear area. He cracked Casaus with that kick. And oh man! Oh, Sledgehammer shots across oh the back God. of the neck. Matt Seidel lightning spiral. Covered deep hook and the victory. The oh, winner of this match, Matt Seidel. Well, good momentum. Uh, Seidel going into Dynamite tomorrow night against Christian Cage. I will be giving some commentary sitting there with yourself, the guy with the cowboy hat and Shivani. Christian Cage likes to say, outwork everyone.
Oh, yeah. But he's he is going to have his hands full tomorrow night. His T-shirts have said Christian Cage working everyone. You know that's funny, bro. You could laugh. You could laugh, Excalibur. I'll see you tomorrow night. Well, I'll be here for the next match, too. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow night also. <laughs> Every time you see what I'm saying, you feel what I'm feeling. Ladies action coming up right now. Diamante collides with Chris Statlin. Today's body set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing from the 305, Diamante. Taz, Diamante has made it abundantly clear that she does not like all of the fanfare surrounding Chris Statlander's return to the ring here. I agree with her. I don't blame Diamante for being ticked off. Well, she has an opportunity to put her money where her mouth is here tonight. And her opponent from the Andromeda Galaxy, Chris. Statlander! Listen to me, Excalibur. When I first came into this company, AEW, okay, you and I were doing commentary on a Chris Statlander match here on Dark. This is before the pandemic and all. We were in arenas and all that jazz. And I remember, I don't remember who she competed against. She won the match. And I stated, you're looking at a future a women's world heavyweight champion here in AEW, that this young lady will be a world heavyweight champion. And I believe that. I still believe that. Even after coming back from this knee injury and all this jazz. But I do feel there's some unfair fanfare because she's aligned with the best friends in Orange Cassidy. There's the best friends. They, these guys, they, 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 they're, they're like the, everyone's favorites behind the scenes, like Darby Allen and all these guys. They're all the same. They're all the same, okay? And I think Diamante, like Team Taz, oh, she's always in an uphill battle. See, like us, we're always in an uphill battle. You understand me? You understand? I, I seems. Your problem is with people that sell more merch than you. That's true. Shop AEW.com. <laughs> oh, that's nice. wow, that's a big. Lot of that's a lot of hats. Sweep there by Statlander. So it's out, double leg drop across the chest. Went for the senton. Diamante rolled in, crucifix. Car here, deep hook. Statlander turns the tables. Just to see? That's the attitude we need. Oh, Swing and a miss there by Diamante. Oh, lose your cool now. Be smart, Diamante. Waist lock, Diamante getting low though. Back elbow, oh, 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 clothesline there. Well, there's not many you know, ladies on a roster that can go toe to toe with Statlander, but if anyone can, it's definitely Diamante. Good shoulder tackle there by Statlander. Dropping Diamante to the mat. Diamante went for the trip. Statlander goes for the trip. Leapfrog. Diamante sending Statlander in power slam. Wow. Wow, Statlander just plucked her out of the air and drove Diamante down. Best friends in Orange Cassidy on the outside. Full appreciation. Statlander, baseball sliding drop kick, driving yeah. Diamante to the barricade. He's got to try. I wouldn't be out here on the outside with Statlander because that's where Statlander kind of seems like she wants her out there. Diamante likes to scrap. She is showing it off right here. Ooh, good Orange Cassidy, Glory Hound. Look at him. See him? I see him. Look at his Glory Hound. He loves the camera. Him and his, his buddy Chuck and Trent. Oh, that was, oh, Statlander got a little too cute. Yeah, they stole the stole the bandana. You, you heard Chuck Taylor shouting, "Turn around!" Statlander took her eye off her opponent just for a moment. And no one's out here helping Diamante. No one's coaching her up. Statlander has Diamante down. Oh, it was actually very innovative. <laughs> she broke the count and then rolled with a spot. No I wasted movements by Chris Statlander. I've never seen anybody do that. I guess when you're from another planet, the Diamante drometer. It's near that where she lives. Yeah, yeah. Cover here. They do things differently in the Andromeda Galaxy, Taz. Andromeda Galaxy. That's near Hop Hop. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's T. Harris there. Diamante Whoa. goes through. Russian leg sweep. Great counter there by Diamante. 
Excellent. Diamante's been on a streak of her own here. She's upset that, she, you know, she feels that she's being overshadowed by Statlander, but. but she is. I mean, Diamante is. I mean, it's really Statlander comes back and everything's rainbows and butterflies for, for Chris Statlander. What about Diamante? She's been out here grinding. Diam While Statlander was rehabbing that knee, she was out here grinding. Diamante has an opportunity here tonight to put the spotlight firmly on herself with a victory over Statlander. It would be Statlander's first loss since her return to action just over a month ago. I feel like that's coming because Diamante has her Ooh. going right now. Uh -oh. Elbow strikes from Statlander. Roundhouse kick. Diamante kicks sends Statlander face first in that middle turnbuckle pad. Diamante, oh, oh wow. Charging in. I caught Statlander low. And the cover here, hook of the far leg. Statlander fires that shoulder up off the canvas. Usually those uh, those corner drop kicks aimed at the, the chest, maybe even sometimes the face, but I think that caught Statlander in the midsection. Yeah, it could knock the wind out of you. It was hard, like cross faces across the jawline, the bottom of the, well, more or less the neck, actually. Diamante, shoot count there. And she was taking those cross faces all the way down to the mat. She was really yeah. putting her whole body weight into them. There's a lot of different ways to do cross faces. Um, you know, I like that she made it her own. I, I did them back in the day, as a lot of people know, but she did them a little bit different to your point. Across the neck, driving towards the mat. And notice how Diamante, she felt Statlander going towards her left shoulder. So she grabbed Statlander's chin, pulled it back towards the right to prevent Statlander from getting back up to her feet, but Statlander just too powerful. Steps through that clothesline backbreaker combo. Statlander charging in, uppercut in the corner. Built up a lot of speed, this Statlander. She's got an explosive first step as Diamante found out the hard way. And Statlander, the running knee strike, knocking Diamante very nearly out of the ring. Uh oh, watch out. And the oh, power. Strong. She's so strong, man. Of Statlander, the BT bomb. One, two, no! I'm telling you, Statlander is so strong. This late in the matchup, to have that kind of power to lift your opponent, walk her around the ring like that is hard as hell. Statlander pouring the pressure on Diamante here. Oh, but Diamante versus out the Cazadora into the stunner. Center of the ring, Statlander in real trouble here. Diamante was looking for the code red, instead transitioned. Work on Rana, no! I think Statlander stood up to counter that code red, and Diamante countered the counter. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Diamante cannot believe that she didn't get the win there. Diamante can't afford to waste time here, Taz. No, I agree. Oh. Shot across the jaw. Oh. oh, God. This girl's a sister. This, swinging, man. This has turned into a firefight. Center of the ring. Statlander went for the clothesline. Diamante. The knee strike into the cravat, looking oh. for the slice bread. Whoa, 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 Statlander whoa, whoa, counter, whoa. bang, bang, theory. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Chris Statlander. Oh my God, what a counter that was. You counter my counter, I'll counter yours. Chris Statlander, a hard fought victory here tonight on Dark. What a battle by both these ladies. Look at this counter here by Statlander. And the Big Bang Theory right there. God, that's vicious. That is absolutely vicious. What a matchup. I'll tell you what, Diamante does not need to hang her head. She had a hell of an outing out here. An incredible one-on-one -on -one contest. An incredible victory for Chris Statlander. Coming up next on AEW Dark, the native beast, Nyla Rose in action with Vicky Guerrero in her corner. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute. Excuse me! Excuse me! 
Jazz, you know how they say the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and over again? And expecting a different result? Please, I, yes. I think Justin might be insane. I think so. Just kill her, Mike. Please, thank you. Kill Justin's mic. Let Vicky do this <laughs> Justin Roberts, you know, you bring so much joy to myself and to everyone here. As soon as you get the hell out of my ring! Wow, Justin gonna make those uh, Italian loafers get out of the ring. Step out! Brand new Italian ones. I saw him pull them out of the bag today. Navy blue. Yeah. Not gray. No. Now it is time to introduce to you the devourer of chaos, an unreachable destruction. Please welcome Nyla Rose, the native beast. A little bit of a different inflection than Justin. Yeah. I, I favor Justin's uh, inflection. You know, Justin usually leads with a nickname and then says, the full name as the last thing. Vicky opting for a different style here. But you know what? She Nyla's been successful since Vicky started doing this, so yes. you can't argue with results, Taz. Well, yeah, the native beast is definitely dominant for sure. By the way, it's not a nickname. You can teach yourself a bitch. It's called a moniker. Damn it. No better than that. The highly vocabulary in mind. You have a vast vocabulary, Excalibur. Moniker is a great, great card game, party game. Always got to get the last word, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> From American Samoa, Rekka Tehaka. Rekka Tehaka making her return here tonight to AEW Dark. Got some nice ink on that left arm. I like that. Very proud of her Pacific Islander heritage. Well, she, uh, Rekka is definitely, you know, has her hands full here with Nyla. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Nyla just sidestepped Rekka and a, a clubbing shot across the spine. A little bit of a misdirect there. A leg lariat. Yeah, good job right there by the native beast. You know, Nyla Rose will be watching Double or Nothing live on pay per view May 30th, Sunday, May 30th, very closely, Taz, because the AEW Women's World Championship will be decided that night. Hikaru Shida takes on Dr. Britt Baker, the challenger. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That's going to be nasty. A lot of history between those two ladies for sure. Uh-oh. Wreck is losing a pool here. Haka not backing down, but Nyla. I think she got too distracted with Vicky on the outside, Taz. Well, that was a good job by Vicky Guerrero to do that, to play distraction. A wow. Gut wrench. Nyla just planting to Haka. Oh. Leaping leg drop there. Nyla, just no wasted motions. Yeah, but I, I love the poise that Nyla has, taking just poise, just, just not rushing into stuff. It's just awesome. Very smart. First whip into the ropes, Nyla. As to Haka, up. Oh, the headbutt there. Nice headbutt. I think Nyla was going to attempt a Samoan drop on somebody from American Samoa. That's tremendous. I didn't think of that. Oh! oh ho, ho. What a nice uh, thrust kick would work. Yeah, moot point right now. And Nyla just dropped to Haka with that shot. And the feel into the corner. Big power. Big power. Rekka to Haka struggling to get up this, this overwhelming assault. Yeah. by Nyla Rose. Sahaka's in a lot of pain, it's obvious. Oh boy. Oh, the cannonball sent on. This is what we, reminiscent of what we saw earlier in the night from Powerhouse Hobbs. Yes, yes. That was a thing of beauty, by the way, Hobbs. Oh! But Nyla Rose, just unstoppable here tonight. So focused, eyes on the opponent, that's the key. She knows she's going in for the kill here. Got her up the beast bomb. Nyla covers and picks up the victory. Here is your winner, the native beast, Nyla Rose. Always impressive is Nyla Rose. Vicky Guerrero has Nyla locked and loaded, baby. And Nyla hoisted Tahaka up high. Drove her down hard with the beast bomb. Whoever walks out of double or nothing, whether it's Hikaru Shida retaining the Women's World Championship 
or Dr. Britt Baker, newly crowned, watch your back. Can't say it enough, watch your back. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, big singles matches. Fari Morales goes one on one with Angelico of the Hybrid Two. minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 205 pounds on Helico. And Helico, otherwise known as Swaggy Jones. That is a hell of a bucket hat he's wearing, man. Oh, he's got a bucket hat that I love, that magic glow green. Wow, I am just in, in awe, in absolute <laughs> awe of Helico. You should, that should be your entrance, Excalibur, you know? You should come out like this, like that same dance and with the hat, with the hood, the mask on. Usually I just walk out from behind the step and repeat and sit down. It's not that big of a product or production. Mind your business, I'm good. Here's a book from Juarez, Mexico, weighing 165 pounds, Barre Morales. It has a very interesting matchup here on Dark, and especially in AEW, because this was, I think, trying to be a Lucha Libre style matchup with Barry Morales hailing from Mexico and Helico training extensively in Mexico. And this is a, usually a lot of competitors not prepared for the style that Angelico brings. Vari Morales though, most well, likely. Yeah, a big height advantage you can see, a little mocking, right, the little mocking of by Angelico. Of course, Vari Morales, as we've seen, uses more of the, the fast place, fast paced, high flying offense found in Lucha Libre where and Helico using that Yaveo style. Yeah, that snap man was impressive. That's a good old fashioned snap mare. Well, you're right, that, that Mexican submission wrestling technique. You see oh. the height, like I said the height, I'm sorry. No, 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 no it's all right. It's not, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Morales is like 6'3", so that, that makes <laughs> Helico like 6'9". Nice. Oh, a little drop step into that reversal. And the mat return there. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of, and Helico's kind of, oh! But there's that. Punking out Morales, but Morales not taking it. That high speed offense there from Morales. And Helico, I think, uh, maybe realizing he's got to focus in a little bit more. Harry's a big uh, jewelry while I wrestle guy. Earrings, necklaces, bracelets, ankle chains. Ricky starts a little bit, too. Oh, he's absolute. Morales once again getting the better of Angelico here. Angelico's getting, a, looks like he's getting a little ticked off. Little sweep of the leg. Sweep right there, yeah. But um, Morales into the Tijeras, taking Angelico for a ride. Angelico maybe coming into this match a little too overconfident. I think you might be right about that. Piscato attempt there by Morales. Ooh. Drop kick. Oh. Angelico faked to the far ropes, instead stopped mid ring and came back with the drop kick. And he's very proud of himself, is Angelico. Look at him. He's chilling. Like he's on the beach in Tijuana. Actually, he lives in Cancun. Okay. Like he's on the beach in Cancun. There you go, Taz. Fixing the post. That a boy. Oh. Big left hand there from Angelico. Crashing into the jaw of Barry Morales. Yeah, Morales is rocked right now. Angelico. Uh -oh. Oof. Maintaining control of the head of Morales. Driving him chest first into the frame of the ring underneath that apron. Base of his jaw might have caught that corner bead on the apron skirt also. For those not too versed in carpentry, that's a piece of metal that connects two like two corners. Right yes. corners. Yes. There's nothing you don't know, huh? Even carpentry. Amazing. Carpentry Jones over here. That's it, bro. And Helico just taking his time, just in control here. Yeah, my grandpa was a carpenter. I believe you. Oh, and Helico thought he was going for a half crab, but he sat down. And look how deep he's got that ankle hooked in. Sure, I thought he was going to go just kind of for an inverted knee ball, but not, uh, he didn't. He's, it's just like he's twisting up that ankle. And that lock rank. Oh, you got to get the ropes. No choice, dude. Fari Morales. A lot of pain, man. Yeah, and, and, and Helico just hanging on for all of that extra, extra effect of that. Morales, you can see unsteady on that left leg. And Helico now, I think, 
that confidence back. Or maybe not. Well, the Morales. Round shots, though. Yeah, those body shots. Well, speaking of body shots, that knee connected for sure by Angelico. Angelico really slowing things down. This is a pace that benefits the technician more than the high flyer. Sure thing. Now Angelico, oh, a little mocking, a little clap mock. Nothing like a good clap mock. He's got those crazy looking tights on Angelico. Ooh, kind of like a Steven Tyler cut. Well, I would. I would, say, I would say both men, perhaps. Oh, Morales coming over the top. Rolls through, and Helico step up. And oh, look at Rana. Well, the ankle is he's, he's favoring that ankle is Vari. Vari Morales. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Big diving cross body up to the floor. Oh. And now mocking in Helico. Oh. Nice. Let's take another look at this here. Watch. This oh. Big cross body off the top there. Morales getting a whole lot of air. Crashing down on Angelico. And now, once again, headed back up to the top. Angelico with his back turned. I'm not sure he spotted Morales. Far away, though. Oh! He did spot him, and he countered him with the anti-air drop kick. He was so far away. I don't know why Valerie did that. Uh-oh. Angelico could be thinking the Navarro death roll. And he oh. is in this. He is wrenching back, tearing at that ankle. And not letting go. Kick the right in the ass. No winner of this match. On Helico. Just a nasty submission. Check it out, man. Oh, the talk right there. Across the knee and ankle area. It's that inverted figure four. Standing, flipping, twisting, and then wrenching on that ankle, on the Achilles. And Helico, so dangerous with that Navarro death roll, using it to great effect here tonight on AEW Dark. A big singles main event here on AEW Dark. Luther of Chaos Project takes on Brian Pillman Jr. of the Varsity Blondes. Main event time here on AEW Dark. Let's do it. Your main event is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from the kingdom of Nye. Weighing 255 pounds, Luther. The original death dealer Luther got involved in Serpentico's match earlier on this evening and played a pivotal role in the defeat of Sonny Kiss. Will Luther be as lucky as his partner here? And his opponent being accompanied by Julia Hart from Cincinnati, Ohio, weighing 223 pounds, Brian Pillman Jr. Brian Pillman Jr. making a Rare singles appearance, rare as of this year. Right. Singles appearance here in AEW Dark. Of course, he's well, team, teammates with Griff Garrison of the Varsity Blondes. To that point, I, have, I actually had a conversation earlier today with Pillman Jr. Uh, and he mentioned that to me about that. He's been in a groove of working as a cohesive union, as you see, Julia Hart. Uh, he's been in a groove as a team wrestler, tag team wrestler. So he was a little concerned with this. I said, hey, Brian. Luther's in the same boat as you. Yeah, that's very true. And Luther, he said, Taz, that's why you're a great coach. He didn't say that part, but I thought that. Gee, thanks, Taz. Just a reminder that coming up tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, it's AEW Dynamite. The Varsity Blondes' biggest match of their career as they take on the Young Bucks challenging for the AEW World Tag Team Championship tomorrow night on Dynamite. The Varsity Blondes really climbing the ranks here in AEW, Taz. They did it quietly, Varsity Blondes. I want to say one thing it has to do with tag team wrestling or the Varsity Blondes, but keep an eye on that left arm of Luther. I think it's heavily padded and wrapped up. So yeah, you can, could, yeah, you can see the uh, the Look cupping uh, the cupping marks there. He's got a lot going on there. If I'm Pillman, I would try and focus on that at some point if you can. Yeah, that cupping indicates that uh, you know you had a. Uh, 
well, those, those marks indicate they had a cupping procedure done to help break up the fascia to... to the muscles are tight, everything tightens up. Yeah, whatnot. to to really improve mobility, improve movement here. Oof. And there we go. Right on the arm. There uh, it is. On the arm, and then to the double wrist lock. It's like I've done this before. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's what you want to do. You see a guy has uh, a limb that's heavily wrapped more than normal. There's some kind of a thick pad on there and some kind of a neoprene underneath that, as you mentioned, the cupping, too. And now he's got just a good old-fashioned hammer lock on, which will... As you know, rip apart your shoulder and arm. Yeah, tearing up at the shoulder as well as the elbow. But, you know, Pillman not really well known as a submission wrestler. Oh, Ooh. that's the pump kick that dropped Sonny Kiss earlier tonight. Pillman in trouble here. Release German suplex. Brian Pillman Jr. spilling to the outside. He landed on his head really hard right there. That's the thing. You're Luther, you know. I mean, Luther's a veteran, so he knows. I got, I got Pillman Jr. injured right now. I'm gonna keep on him, hot pursuit. And I'm telling you, I think Luther's got some kind of an issue with that arm, so he probably feels like I'm wounded. Let me stay on Pillman Jr. because he's definitely focused on my arm already. Meaning Luther. It has, oh wait, watch out. Well, Luther just walking down Julia Hart here. She is. Those pom poms aren't gonna help you, young lady. But Pillman turning the corner and landing some overhand chops. And the Irish, oh no, the hammer throw Ooh. into the barricade. Pillman just crashing down. And Taz, you know, interesting point about Brian Pillman Jr. His father actually training with the Hart family, as did Luther up in uh, Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. That's an absolutely great point. And so, Little bit of history unbeknownst to uh, very well. creative matchmaking by Tony Khan, I must say. Hey, I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Put an extra zero on the end of your check this week, buddy. <laughs> no complaints on that. <laughs> I'm just pointing out, you know, the way I see it, my friend. And Luther grabbing at the mulleted hair of Brian Pillman Jr. Really oh. punishing him here against the ropes. Hard chop right there for sure. And oh. Well, those are definitely heavy, heavy blows for sure. Those chops will sting, man. Hit you right in your sternum area. The hammer thrown to the corner. Did you see how Pillman's head got rocked back by the impact of that clothesline? Yeah, Pillman's hurting right now. Luther, he will just keep oh. bringing punishment. Ryan Pillman Jr. in a lot of trouble here, Taz. We, we spoke about it earlier tonight during Griff Garrison's match. And, and you know, you mentioned it in your conversation with Pillman, but this is his first singles match here in AEW in, in, a, in a, quite a series of months. And Right. Well, and the thing, too, dude, it's like, you know, and, and just for the audience, they most might not get this, but you mentally, when you go into, and you're a tag team wrestler, you mentally prepare for matches obviously much different. When you go as a singles one-on-one -on -one city, man, it's just a totally, totally different thing. People think, ah, oh, it's just pro wrestling. No, no, no. It's a totally different type of mindset. Well, especially if you're if you're wrestling exclusively tag team matches for, for months, it's right. it's a different type of cardio, too. Absolutely. You know, you're used to getting those those breaks to catch your breath, where one-on-one, -on -one, it is just nonstop. But Pillman. Impressive. Big body slam, hook on the far leg. Luther kicking out, though. Good job by Brian. That's a lot of weight, man, in that full body. Body slam we just saw by Pillman Jr. Three point stance, his football background there. Charging into the corner. A lot of monkey flips in football? No. Okay. No, but the. Uh, Big right hand there by Luther. Definitely three point stance yeah. in every play, <laughs> but uh, no. <laughs> the, the right hand by Pillman, though, knocked Luther back into the ring. Brian Pillman Jr. Cross body, hooks the far leg. Luther kicking out. Small by Pillman, it just goes right back after Luther. And Pillman looking for the crucifix. Can he get it? He's got Luther pinned. No, two count. And that was close. Oh, oh what the hell? Look, Sir oh, Pentico sir. just lurking at ringside as Pillman goes for the shoulders up. That shoulder's the up. The backslide. The referee Bryce, he, he couldn't see the other shoulder was up. But Pillman keeping the pressure on, really testing the gas tank. Of Luther, a little extra wrench in that left arm. Luther elevates 
Brian Pillman Jr. over the top, swinging a mid. Oh, right hand there by Pillman. And Serpentico grabbing the, the leg. Hell? Ooh. Serpentico sent crashing in the barricade. Pillman! Springboard clothesline. He decks Luther. Two deep stack in the three count. The oh, winner of this match, Brian Pillman Jr. Well, that distraction by Serpentico didn't help. Oh, Serpentico's oh, not done, though. Serpentico, all oh, the diving stomps onto the spine. Serpentico assaulting Brian Pillman Jr. after the bell. Yeah, there's bad intentions on the mind right now of Chaos Project. And Julia Hart, she, oh, uh, she's running to the back. She's got to be going for Griff Garrison. I would think so. As Chaos Project. Well, he better get out of here. Griff got to get out of here. Oh, here we go. Chaos Project were looking for creeping death, but there's Griff Garrison and Julia Hart coming to the aid of Brian Pillman Jr. The Varsity Blondes have that big World Tag Team title shot tomorrow night on Dynamite against the Young Bucks. Brian Pillman Jr. may be a little banged up headed into that match. That is not how the Varsity Blondes want to go into the biggest match of their careers. Tomorrow on TNT. Double or nothing, fast approaching. Omega! The stakes are getting higher. <laughs> if you guys lose, the inner circle has to break up forever! Take it or leave it! AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, tomorrow at 8 on TNT.